Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Vimeo Station. Good, Basil Lumio Station. How's it going, everybody? So, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed or if you paid enough attention, but uh, last week I actually did not have an upload. I just had some personal life stuff happen that I'd rather not get into, and it prevented me from being able to record the night that I normally record these. And also, um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell from the audio, but I got a new microphone, so let me know how the audio sounds. It should sound better than... Uh, my old audio used to sound sorry I was adjusting the mic a little bit there but yeah anyways um, I'm just waiting for my point I just wanted to do this quick little intro before I actually got into the actual recording of the battle so with that being said I will probably just cut to when I get to a uh, team preview when I'm facing my opponent so with that being said guys um, I'll see you on like a split second alright guys so of course if you guys do enjoy the battle then by all means, make sure to uh, leave a like on the video, guys. Of course, the support is greatly appreciated. Now, let's take a quick look at my team. Show you my team real quickly. Um, ap again, apologize. The bottom screen is a little distorted, but we got um, Florgus, Fortress, Ampharos, Infernape, Swampert, and C Scarf Crobat, which I know may seem odd, but I have used it in six. I have used it with success in the in the um in the past so i'm hoping it'll put in some work in this match uh looking at threats on megan's side i'll leave her twitter link down in the description if you guys would like to battle her then uh, make sure to go check her out let me put this back up to my display only got a minute left ah oh, hmm. that cinchino could be a bit of an issue uh, alakazam could be a problem i definitely think that my crobat though is my best lead because I am faster than her entire team, I believe, so that's going to be good for me. So let's see what she wants to lead off with. Um, I'm thinking she's leading with Sinchino, to be honest, because I feel like that would be the best thing for her to lead off with, as she ends up leading off with the Gudra, actually, okay. Um, I'm also fine with that, seeing as I should be able to just safely go for the U-turn out from it um i am kind of fearing that it might possibly have the sludge bomb actually looking at her team florgus actually might put in a lot of work also she has no guarantee way of getting rid of my hazards so if i can get up rocks and spikes with fortress and swamper respectively then that'll put me in a really good situation so <laughs> she ends up getting the um speed drop Lady Gudra, <laughs> I just noted the nickname. And the question is, ah, uh, I know, I know the Florga switch-in is so obvious, but it's honestly the best switch-in I have for this Gudra. She ends up going for the flamethrower, predicting me to bring in my fortress. Not gonna lie, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it for a split second there, but I knew that Gudra does learn flamethrower and fire blast. I believe. Well, I was thinking it would have fire blast, not flamethrower, but. She has a um, flamethrower, as we saw. So looking at her team, she really has, honestly, no safe switch into my Florgus. So I should be in a situation where I can honestly just go for a Moonblast. And if I'm not mistaken, this Florgus is actually physically defensive as opposed to specially... No. Yeah, it is physically defensive because my specially defensive one has Toxic as opposed to Aromatherapy. And I really wanted Aromatherapy on my Florgus. So, definitely just going to stay in, I believe, and go for a Moonblast. I hit her whole team for neutral damage, and Florgus does have an amazing, amazing special attack stat. So, I'm not really dreading whatever she's going to want to bring in. I'm thinking her best switch in is maybe Floatzel? Actually, <laughs> she did end up bringing in a Floatzel. Okay. So, let's see how much damage this is going to do. Keep in mind, I am physically defensive, so I should be able to take this on. It just died. Oh, I got a crit. Um, I don't know how much that crit might have mattered, because I was thinking she could have had switcheroo, so the following turn, if she had lived the Moonblast, what I was going to do is go for Protect to scout out to see if she was going to go for switcheroo, but if she didn't have switcheroo, with me being physically defensive, I should definitely have been able to take one Waterfall and in return, uh, knock her out with the following Moonblast, so... It might have mattered or might have not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
So she ends up bringing in the Sinchino, which I'm fine with. And I honestly just want to switch right into my fortress. Because if she does want to go straight for the tail slap, then I will definitely be able to at least get up a layer of spikes, which is going to be really, really handy to wear down our team. Especially that Umbreon. Umbreon is very specially defensive bulky, so that's going to be a pain to deal with. No U-turn, no U-turn. Ah, she does end up going for the tail slap, so I'm fine with that, and <laughs> that's doing no damage. Actually, no, that's doing 6 to 5 HP, which I guess after it adds up does do a decent amount so I see no life orb I'm hoping she doesn't have something like the King's Rock because that would actually be really really lame and as I said I should just be able to get up a layer of spikes uh, this is really the main reason Fortress is on the team just to be able to get up hazards and prevent my opponent from getting up hazards plus it is nice to spread around toxic so yeah definitely gonna be able to get up one layer of spikes um, Looking back at it, maybe, maybe, just maybe I should have gone for the Toxic. Because I might have been able to catch the incoming, um, the incoming Sableye or even this Gudra. She does have, are you kidding me? Really, you guys saw that. Oh my lord, I, <laughs> that's actually so frustrating. Oh, damn it. Okay. Luckily, 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 Crobat is is faster than Sinchino, no matter what. So, I'm not too worried about it, but it was a little bit frustrating that I was not able to get up my one layer of spikes. Because that extra 12% damage might really end up costing me later. So, yeah, as you can see, Flo Florges is just such a threat to her team, which I guess is kind of... I don't know. I don't know. That uh, that one layer of spikes really just would have come in so handy. Because it might have been able to nab me certain 2 KOs with Florgus as it is. But let's see what she wants to do. I don't think she honestly has anything. For my... Not my Crobat, sorry. For my Florgus. Hmm. Alright, so she's going to switch out again. What's she gonna bring in this time? She's gonna bring in the the Umbreon. Okay, Nine, 99% of Umbreons are especially defensive. So let's see how much this does. Oh my lord, that did nothing. Okay, that did not do as much damage as I had hoped. Okay, so she doesn't have leftovers. So I'm wondering what her item is. Um, either way though, just gonna switch right back in the fortress. I have Toxic. I am a steel type, so even if she wants to synchronize it, well, even if, I shouldn't say even if she wants, if she does synchronize it over, it won't affect me because I'm a steel type. You get what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you, you get what I'm trying to say. So here, I'm going to get up that one important, important layer of toxic, not toxic spikes. See, I kind of wish I had toxic spikes on this fortress as opposed to toxic, but I believe there are just more situations where toxic comes in handy more than toxic spikes because I'm able to hit a uh, flying type Pokemon and levitating Pokemon, which really does come in clutch in certain situations. So keep in mind, this would be my second layer of spikes, but she did indeed have the uh, King's Rock, which amazingly she got a flinch with U-turn. <laughs> So that was a little lame, but I guess it's not too big of a deal. As she brings back in the Gujra, she's going to pass off the wish to that Gujra. I'm perfectly fine with this, because honestly what this Gujra just allows me to do is just get a free switch back into my Florgus. I know this is a little bit repetitive, but it's just honestly the best play that I can do. is just bring in Florgus, force her to switch out, then just make the uh, proper switch accordingly to whatever she decides to bring in. Because she has no proper way of stopping Florgus. And she still has not revealed to me that she has a Sludge Bomb. Which she could definitely go for this turn. And if she does, then that's really going to suck. So I'm actually a little bit worried about that. Don't. Ah, it's just. She's going for the Simple Flamethrower. I'm perfectly fine with this. There's a chance she could burn me though. Which would be a little bit annoying. So here, I, I think I'm going to make an executive decision. I'm going to make a risky play. I want to say she's going to bring in her Umbreon, so what I'm going to do is double switch into my Infernape. Yep, got her. So she's going to bring in the Umbreon, this just allows me to bring in my Infernape now, which is really great. And this would have taken 
a little bit more damage if I got that one layer of spines. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna stop bringing that up. Unless it comes into a crucial situation. I just, I love the way that Infernape's hair looks. It just looks so cool. Also, my Caesar is a female. I gotta fix that. Um. Something is telling me to nasty plot. I really, really want a nasty plot. But I say, I say close combat is actually my safer play to do so. And this is actually a really cool Infernape set that I found a couple months ago. It's a mixed sweeper Infernape. I believe it's max special attack, max speed, with four in attack, with close combat, nasty plot, grass knot, and fire blast. The only reason you have close combat is to be able to hit uh, Blissies and Numbreon. And oh, should have nasty plotted. No, no, <laughs> no, damn it. Oh, that's upsetting. That is upsetting. Okay, this turn I'm gonna nasty plot so I can become a threat and maybe try to do some work to her and I don't think she's gonna see the nasty plot coming so let's see what she wants to do she has the knockoff okay that does kind of suck because it does weaken my attacks but I mean I'm a plus two I have fire blast ah I'm actually worried this thing is gonna be able to live my fire blast <laughs> borrowing the fact that I don't miss hopefully yes I'm able to hit. Let's see how much it does. Come on, come on, come on. And oh, come. Really, really. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Oh. I mean, what could Sable I really. I don't know. I do kind of feel bad that I crit it, but then again, I'm thinking it didn't matter, to be honest. So she brings back in the Cinchino, which we know has the King's Rock. Again, Fortress right now is just really proving to be the MVP. Damn, For Fortress has been in the most. And thanks to that aggressive double switch that I made with Infernape, I was able to gain a little bit of momentum back into my favor. As she ends up going for the Rock Blast, to see how much damage this does. Okay, that's doing... In, in total, it'll be doing around 5 points of more damage, I believe, than Tail Slap did. Let's see. It's, it's it's getting there. It's doing a decent chunk. See, I'm just oh, I'm really worried about that about that um that King's Rock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go for Toxic. I'm gonna go for Toxic, just on the off chance that if she does go for the Tail Slap or Rock Blast, try to flinch me to death. If I break through the flinch, I can Toxic it. So that's what I'm gonna do. But she ends up going straight for the U-turn. Hopefully this time we do not get flinched. Hopefully this time we don't get flinched. Oh, Alakazam, really? Oh, I hit the Toxic. <laughs> well, that's not gonna help me right now. Okay, and, I don't, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about this being Mega Alakazam either. Uh, do I have to Fodder Fortress here? Not really, I don't lose anything by, by switching. What I could do, looking at his team, her, 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 her team, my apologies. My Ampharos, as much as it pains me to, the only reason I wanted to play Yu Yu was so I could use Mega Ampharos. Unfortunately though, Mega Ampharos right now is honestly proving to be the uh, biggest uh, weak link of my team. So she's going to end up going for the Shadow Ball. As I just get a free switch into my Ampharos. Actually, I should be able to just save the Mega Evolve. And yeah, I can definitely go for the Volt Switch seeing that she does not have a Ground type. So I'm going to Mega Evolve and go straight for the Volt Switch. I'm going to be able to gain a lot of momentum with this play. Because not only will I be able to, to get Switch Initiative. But I'll be able to just turn the tide even more into my favor. I think I just repeated what I said. Just said it differently. But I'm just going to gain a lot of momentum <laughs> by Volt Switching. So, she did end up switching into an Umbreon, and actually that just that one layer of spikes is actually really, really coming in handy. So I'm able to get off a solid, solid chunk of damage, and actually I should be able to bring in my Crobat to U-turn now that I think about it. Yeah, I'm actually going to bring in Crobat, because I'd rather bring in Crobat and go for U-turn than stay in with my Infernape and just give her a free switch back into her Cinch, you know. So just going to go for U-turn as she ends up going for the Protect, okay? I guess just scouting got to see what I wanted to lock myself into. And it is indeed going to be the U-turn, but I believe at this point she's too low to the point where if she switches out and switches back in, she'll survive. Actually, no, she might live another switch in, but 
it won't benefit her from being that low at, at amount of HP. And if I was able to get up that second layer of spikes, I might I might have actually been able to knock out the Umbreon with my Volt Switch from Ampharos. So I'm gonna get up out of there. And I believe the score is 6-3 my favor. Uh, the question is though, what do I want to bring in? I kind of want to bring in my Ampharos. Yeah, I'm gonna bring in Ampharos because as I mentioned earlier, it's the most expendable team member on my team. So if I do want to fodder off anything immediately, I would rather it be her than one of my other Pokemon. So let's see exactly what she wants to bring in. I'm guessing her best bet is going to be the Sinchino, but no, she brings in the Alakazam. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I'm going to play the Aggressor, and normally with Ampharos, I just Volt Switch and then Toxic when I have to. But aren't... aren't... Um, Dragon Pulse and Thunderbolt, are they... No, Thunderbolt is 5 base points stronger, okay. I thought they were both base 90, so I was like, well, it doesn't matter which I go for. But Thunderbolt is indeed stronger, so I'm going to go for that instead. As she ends up going straight for the Psychic, that's not going to be able to knock me out, considering that this is a pretty bulky uh, Ampharos, and I'm going to be able to break that potential Focus S, which is really great. <gasps> oh. <laughs> really? Really? I have crit three of her four Pokemon that I've taken down. I would not blame her if she got upset about that. Then again, as I mentioned, I don't think the crits really mattered. If I'm, if I'm gonna be that guy, I don't know. I mean, you guys who are watching the video, you you can be the judge. You can I can you can even run damage calcs, and I'll run damage calcs with you too. And show you or show you that the crit the crits that I did get may have or may have not mattered so she ends up bringing in the Gudra just gonna leave an Ampharos for death fodder I might actually maybe be faster than Gudra actually no isn't Gudra like base 80 speed I think is, I, I, I want to say yeah okay so she's able to outspeed me and she's gonna be able to knock me out which I'm fine with and this ah this Gudra's really starting to bother me it's starting to be a pain in my side Hmm. I want to say, no, I was going to say that Crobat can switch in, but uh, if she didn't have that Sinchino, I would definitely bring in Crobat. I need Infernape because Infernape stops her Sableye. No, wait, no. Okay, I got rid of Umbreon. Did I finish Sableye? I think I did. I think she's down to her just her Sinchino and her Gudra. So yeah, I think I can honestly just bring in my my Infernape at this point. Well, no. Maybe just... Yeah, I think just Forgus is my best switching. Clu... Clu... I was... Cluz. Cuz... If she switches into Sinchino, then... I think... Moonblast Oko's it? Just because Sinchino doesn't have the best special defense around? So yeah, just definitely gonna go for the Moonblast. And I really lose nothing in doing so, so I'm not worried about what she wants to go for. So let's see what she wants to do. Oh, excuse me. I burped. I apologize if you heard me. Um, I definitely think, though, that I have this one. Definitely think I have a one, so... She does not turn out to have the a Sludge Bomb, as Moonblast does nothing. Oh my lord, that is definitely Assault Vested, because that did no damage whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is just stay in, just fire off Moonblasts until she knocks me out. This way I just get a free switch, and then I should be able to clean up the game with my Crobat and my Infernape. So yeah, I'm not really too worried about keeping Forgus at this point. So yeah, I'm hoping you guys are enjoying the uh, battle so far. I know the beginning was a little bit repetitive, but then I kind of switched it up and I made a double switch with them, with Infernape, which was really able to help me out. So I'm going to be able to knock out the Gudra. And then... All right, guys, I'm back. I I'm sorry I just had somebody interrupt me. Um, she was able to take out my Florgus, 
but now all I have to do is just get a free switch into my crowbat and then I should be able to just finish her off with a brave bird and that is going to be the victory in my favor so yeah hopefully you guys did enjoy this I apologize for the little interruption literally near the end of the video but if you guys did enjoy the make sure to hit the like button guys I would definitely be back next week with another upload and with that being said guys I will see you till then make sure to check out my channel subscribe to Lumio Station and make sure to go check out my opponent's channel which was Megan so yeah uh, later everybody thank you for watching